Coming up, we will be on location at Advanced Pain Medicine Institute in Berwyn Heights, Maryland, discussing an effective procedure for relieving chronic pain that so many of us suffer from with one of the Washington, D.C. area's leading pain medicine specialists, Dr. Reza Gorbani. Dr. Gorbani graduated with honors from Tufts University and completed a fellowship in pain management at Harvard University's Brigham and Women's Hospital. Dr. Gorbani is a diplomat of the American Board of Anesthesiology with a subspecialty certification in pain management. He is a fellow of interventional pain practice, the only certifying agency which tests the ability to perform interventional pain procedures, is a member of the American Academy of Pain and the American Society of interventional pain physicians, among others. Welcome, Dr. Gorbani. Thank you. Oh, it's our pleasure to have you back on again, the third time, in fact, that you've been on the new me. We've got a lot to talk about regarding uh, chronic pain, something that so, so many of us suffer from. And I wanted to have you on to help enlighten us about a very effective procedure that I understand is available to all of us. But before we get into that, I wanted to begin, if I may, by asking you if you can please tell us what are some of the most common causes of chronic pain. Common causes of chronic pain are numerous. Um, the disorders of spine is uh, one of the major common causes of chronic pain. This could be from herniated disc, from degenerative disc disease, from arthritis in the spine, as well as uh, patients who have had back surgery and has developed scar tissue around the nerves in the spine. Other causes of chronic pain include post-herbatic neuralgia, which is a condition after um, um, shingles that people develop at early, uh, later stages in their life. Um, various forms of neuropathy, such as diabetic neuropathy, which is very common uh, in the United States, um, as well as uh, uh, many causes from trauma, um, to um, muscles, to bones, to uh, nerves. So there are numerous causes of chronic pain. Chronic pain is a pain that usually lasts more than six months, and it's a bad pain. There are good pain, there are bad pain in general. Uh, I think speaking. any pain that's not good, though, is bad, definitely. <laughs> For example, if you um, uh, touch your finger to uh, a flame, that's a good pain. You will feel pain, and you pull your finger back. But a bad kind of pain is a pain that it constantly is there even though you're not uh, having a stimulus, such as touching your finger to the fire. And this pain is debilitating. It's called neuropathic pain. And it's continuous um, without any stimulation. How prevalent are these problems regarding chronic pain? Are we talking about, what, 20% of the population, 30%? Because I know a lot of folks out there suffer from chronic pain. Well, CDC um, has recently um, noted that one in every 10 Americans suffer from chronic pain lasting more than uh, one year. Um, that is significant. Exactly. Um, one of the most common ca uh, um, causes of patients going to uh, their primary care doctor after um, having a common flu is complaining of lower back pain. So as you can see, it's a very um, uh, prevalent uh, uh, problem. So what is the effective procedure that can help treat this problem and relieve the pain that we suffer from? Well, people who have chronic pain, they try many different remedies, from medication to physical therapy to various injections to surgery. And uh, if patients who have tried all of these uh, modalities and they're still in chronic pain of limbs, trunk, um, lower back, there is a device called spinal cord stimulator, very similar to the pacemaker that people use for the heart that can um, change the pathway or stop the pain pathway to the brain through the spinal cord. Um, it's a battery operated generator the size of a pocket watch that it's placed under your skin connected to two little leads like the size of a spaghetti and uh, this is placed in an epidural space. Uh, this is a space near the spinal cord 
for usually pregnant women who get labor epidural for pain um, get that procedure. So we're, look, we're talking about a small device, as you just described and we just saw on the screen here a few moments ago, that is placed uh, within the spinal cord, uh, lower part of the spinal cord, I, I think. Well, it the device itself is uh, placed uh, usually either in the abdomen okay. or over the uh, buttock uh, above the belt line. Okay. Um, and it, it's very small, as I said, the size of a pocket bike. It's connected to two leads which are under the skin going to the uh, near the spinal cord. So the actual device is not on the spinal cord. Um, this uh, device generates low uh, intensity electrical stimulation through these leads and these leads when they um, get these electrical stimulation um, basically put the pain nerves, the neuropathic pain nerves to sleep and in exchange some other nerves wake up that give you a tingling sensation in the area that you use to feel pain. Okay. It's very similar to a massage uh, of, of the area that you had pain. Very interesting and what as far as when I know it varies patient to patient but typically uh, on average what would you say uh, it, time wise it would take for a patient to start feeling a lot better or at least the pain becoming less? When this device is placed in people feel uh, immediate relief. Oh. This is, this is uh, uh, an immediate uh, disruption of the pain pathway. Um, patients who are um, uh, suffering from, um, again, lower back pain who had surgery, and uh, about 40 percent of these patients still going to have pain, uh, debilitating pain, and they don't want to have any other surgery or they're not candidate for any other surgery can benefit from uh, uh, this device. Again, patients who uh, suffer from post-herpatic neuralgia, people who have peripheral vascular disease, people who have diabetic neuropathy, um, people who have reflex sympathetic dystrophy, which is a debilitating disease, hypersensitivity, hypersensitivity of the nerves uh, in, the spinal, uh, in, in the spinal cord can benefit from this device. Um, the history of using uh, spinal cord stimulator goes back to 1967. When oh, it so it's been around a long time. It has been around a long time. It's an FDA-approved, very safe procedure. With the advancement of technology and uh, surgical technique, um, we have made breakthrough um, um, uh, advances in treating pain with chronic pain with this device.